The Tour of Flanders, or Ronde van Vlaanderen, is one of the most exciting one-day races on the cycling calendar, and therefore firm favourite amongst most cycling fans, and we are definitely including ourselves in that. Beginning in 1913, it's actually the longest running classic without a hiatus, having only been halted during World War I. So it's definitely apt that the Flemish monument, now for both men and women of course, has a place on the revised calendar this autumn. Mm. Fingers crossed it does. That, that would be the ultimate GCN curse, wouldn't it, if it got cancelled between us recording this and this Sunday. But uh, of course we hope it goes ahead. Uh, coming up, we are going to be looking at what are revised routes for both the men's and the women's races. Plus, of course, all the main protagonists. Both the men's and women's Ron van Vlaanderen will take place this Sunday, the 18th of October, and we'll probably see the race run in similar weather conditions to its usual spring placement on the calendar. Mid 20s and sunny. The last few years are anything to go by. Although 2008, there was snow, if I remember correctly. Uh, anyway, there are some revisions to the route for this year's races due to the revised schedule, which we'll get onto shortly. But the other thing that's notable about this Sunday is, of course, the fact that it's running on the same day as stage 15 of the Giro d'Italia. And as such, the organisers of the Flanders race, the Flanders Classics, uh, have moved the race forward so that it finishes at about 3.45 local time, which in theory should be about an hour before the Giro stage finishes. On top of that, the women's race is scheduled to finish about an hour after uh, that Giro d'Italia stage finishes. So we as fans are going to get to tune into three very good races, uh, all in one day and all live. And actually, if you're in the right territory, you can find that on Race Pass, of course. It's going to be a big day of cycling. It will be. Yeah, it will, yeah. And the men's race has been cut down from 267 to 241 kilometres. And the women's has been cut to 135k, down from 157k. Now, the organisers say the reason behind this is due to the condensed nature of the Belgium Classics during this period, with shorter courses allowing teams and riders the opportunity to recover between each race. Although, ironically, with the cancellation of Paris-Roubaix, they've got nothing to recover for except for next season, the cobbled riders. But nevertheless, we should celebrate this Sunday even more. Uh, regardless of what's coming after, or not as the case may be, uh, their decisions mean that they do cut out two key climbs, uh, the famous Muir van Gelsbergen and also the Ten Bosse. Uh, but what they have included for the first time in a few years is the Valkenberg climb, not the one from Amstel Gold, of course, but the one that's near Brakel, uh, before they go to the now you know, fairly standard finishing loop into Aldenada. It's going to be a shame to miss the iconic climb of the Mare this year, but at the same time it's going to be really interesting to see how a shorter course will impact the race and the finale. I don't think it's going to have a huge effect. I mean, we've got those two climbs missing, but the rest of it has a very familiar feel. In fact, the start lines are also both the same, the men's being in Antwerp and the women's being in Aldenata, which is the um, finish line for both races. Now, the finale of the race is going to be the same cobble climb bonanza that we are used to in Flanders, starting with that ascent of Oudquarmont and Paterberg, bringing the race into the final 40k, where the peloton will face the cobblestones of the Maria Borstraat, the steam beat Dries, and then the climb of the Timeberg, which is also known as the Boonenberg. It was, yeah. He attacked so many times there, didn't he? Uh, after that climb, they will then head to Runza, which is the, where they'll be greeted by the Kreuzberg, and then they'll take that double punch of the Alde Quaramont and the Paterberg on for the final time. And on that final time, they will descend off the Paterberg, and they'll have 10 very open and flat kilometres on the run into the finish. The race can still often hang in the balance by this point. In fact, it can be turned on its head in those final flat kilometres. Yeah, for sure. And the women will face that same finale that the men face with a 40 kilometer finishing loop, which starts from the Timeberg climb. And it's going to be a brutal, brutal finish for both races, I think. It's just the, the toughest cobblestones that Belgium has to offer, yeah, really. I can't wait. It might good. also be worth noting the fact that the organisers haven't put out a detailed time frame uh, or even map, really, of the courses this year because they are trying to discourage members of the public from going onto the route to watch it. Uh, however, as we saw in Ghent Wevelgem last Sunday, that doesn't make the race any less exciting. So, who will be at the finish first in these beautiful races? Let's take a look at some of the riders to watch out for. 
We shall start with the men's start list, and there's quite a lot to pick apart here, but of course the riders that most of us will be focused on from the start are Matthew van der Poel and Wout van Aert. And actually, uh, those two will probably be focused very much on each other if last week was anything to go by. You wonder actually whether they'll finish last and second last. Uh, so determined were they that neither of them would go up the road in ghent Wevelgem. They did finish last and second last from that particular group. I mean, we shouldn't just focus on them, but for many reasons, they're the favourites. They're just so strong to start with. And can you imagine if it is those two on their own at the top of the Paterberg for the last time, we see them duelling it out on the run into Aldenard. I mean, that would be quite something to watch and that would increase the rivalry between Belgium and the Netherlands, I reckon. Oh, I think so. I think it would go down in history as a classic <laughs> finish to the Ron van Vlanderen. But apart from those two, there is some, oh, there's a lot of talent on the start list, I tell you. And there were rumours that some of the GC favourites from the Tour de France would be on the start line. However, it seems that the fatigue has got to their legs and they won't be there. However, we will see newly crowned world champion Julian Alaphilippe on the start line. For the first time, won't we? Uh, but despite it being his debut at the race, he'll definitely start as one of the favourites. Not least, actually, because he rides for the Koenig Quickstep, who've had just a little bit of success over the years in the Cobble Classics. So amongst the start list we've seen, and next to Alaphilippe, are um, well, Tim de Klerk. He'll ride on the front all day, probably through the finish line, out the other side, and home as well. We've got Zdenek Stibar, who's always promised a lot. Casper uh, Asgreen, uh, Eve Lampart too, uh, plus another couple of riders that will no doubt be strong as well. So uh, they'll all start as one of the big favourites for the race this year. Another man making his debut is Dylan Turns, a Belgian from Bahrain McLaren. He's had some big results already in quite a short career so far, uh, but this year just hasn't seemed to have fired on all cylinders uh, since racing resumed. Yeah, and the usual classic specialist will also be there, with the notable absence, perhaps, of Peter Sagan, who is, of course, competing in the Giro d'Italia, and also Greg Van Avermaet, who sustained some pretty serious injuries in his crash in Liege, Baston and Liege, and is still undecided whether he will take part, but I think even if he is there, It'll be hard to see him in the finale mm. after such kind of hard injuries. In yeah, Belgium. even for somebody as hard as Greg Van Avermaet, it's going to be well, hard to see him in the finale given those injuries, as Connor said. Uh, Mas Pedersen will be fully expecting to be there in the finale given his performance at Ghent Wevelgem. He might even have won the Shoulder Prix on Wednesday by the time you watch this. Uh, we shall find out. But he's quickly amassing a very impressive list of wins in a young career. And he was second in this very race a couple of years ago uh, at a time when he was very much an unknown in the sport of science. So he's got history here too. Oliver Nassen and Matteo Trenton of CCC. Oliver Nassen, of course, riding for French squad AG2R, will be on the start line and it'll be, they'll be going for a first win in the Monument Classic, having never taken a Monument win before. However, it's got to be said that Trenton was looking the stronger of the two in Ghent Wevelgem mm. recently. And we managed to get this far through listing off favourites without mentioning last year's winner. Uh, Alberto Betio of EF Pro Cycling also looked great, didn't he, at Ghent Wevelgem on Sunday. Definitely one of the strongest in that front group, despite finishing just off the podium. And he's also got a very strong team here with him. Uh, Sepp Van Mark, local riders, promised so much in these races, but just failed to deliver in form of winning one of the big ones. And they've got some experience in that team beyond him as well, in the form of Jens Kirkalera and also Sebastian Langeveld. Yeah, that is some team. Now, another rider who could challenge in the Ron van Vlaanderen this year is Soren Kral Andersen. He took two wins in the Tour de France in pretty impressive fashion, actually. And he also recently took a win in the individual time trial at the Bink Bank Tour. Now, with those kind of legs, he could seriously, seriously challenge at this year's race. And he'll be hoping to have alongside him Thies Benoot, who is another rider who will be up there at the finish. Now, he didn't take part in Ghent Wevelgem due to the fact that he appeared on national television alongside Jan Bakkerlands, who later tested positive for COVID-19. Mm. It's bizarre, really, that he was allowed to go outside of his bubble and onto national TV before the most important races of his entire season. But anyway, uh, beyond that, who else have we got? Well, Michal Kwiatkowski and Luke Rowe will be amongst the protagonists uh, from Team Ineos Grenadiers. Stefan Kuhn of Groupama FDJ has been looking decent in these races recently. Uh, Tim Wellens and John Dainko, they can't be counted out for Lotto Sudau. Uh, nor can Michael Felgren of NTT, although he again has not been at his best for a little while now. Uh, there's also Dries de Bont, the newly crowned Belgian champion, is a bit of an outsider. And if you want another outsider, Daniel Oss uh, of Bora Hansgrohe. Now he's always here at the Classics to work for either Greg Van Avermaet or in latter years, Pete Sagan. Uh, in Sagan's absence though, he will be protected, you'd have thought, and he's actually often there deep into these races, so you never know 
Uh, we've also got another former winner on the start line, Alexander Kristoff. Uh, he won that first stage of the Tour de France, loves these races. We'll be a bit disappointed though that the race isn't quite as long this year. And then Nils Pollitt, who performed so well recently at Paris-Roubaix uh, last year of course, he will lead the Israel Startup Nation. So plenty of riders then, in conclusion, that have a big chance. On to the women's race now, and again, the Dutch are looking like the ones to beat. Anna van der Breggen will be looking to add to her tally with her team, Bulls Dolmans, after taking the win back in 2018. Yeah, we've also got Annemiek van Fleurten of Michton Scott, of course. Uh, she lost out in both the World Championships and at Liège, Baston Liège this year. So it's going to be quite intriguing to see what her form's like over the cobbles this year on Sunday. Uh, but regardless, that team is very strong, uh, whether it's to work for her or even if it's to work uh, for each other, if she's not quite as strong. They've got Grace Brown. Uh, she's looked fantastic over the last couple of weeks, winning Brabant's Appeal, second at Liège, Baston Liège, behind Diagnan. Uh, they've also got Amanda Spratt, although she did crash badly at the Giro Rosa, so we'll see where she's at. Uh, and also Sarah Roy, uh, she did fourth place at Gent Wevelgem last Sunday, so she's on great form too. Another Dutch rider to watch, I mean there's just so many of them, Ellen van Dijk. Now, she's a serious rider to watch out for. She won the race back in 2014 and she has shown strong form recently with a podium place at the world's individual time trial. Will we see a win from her six years on from her last? Well, we might well see a win from Trek Segafredo because again, they're very strong too. Uh, Lizzie Dignan is in their lineup. She, of course, won Liège Baston Liège, amongst other big races this season, is currently leading the Women's World Tour, so watch out for her. Uh, but they've also got the ever present and ever strong Elisa Longa Borghini of Italy. Belgian Jolien Dora has never won at Flanders. Like her teammate Van der Breggen, she has announced her retirement at the end of next season. So this is her penultimate shot at taking the win here in Flanders. She has finished second before, and I bet she won't want to leave it hanging in the balance mm. like that. Uh, we've got another former winner actually who'll be looking to double up. The great Mariana Voss of CCC Live. She won it all the way back in 2013 and can obviously never ever be counted out. Then there's Marta Bastianelli, now riding for Ali Ljubljana, and they've also got a decent team here. Uh, you'll see them in those fluorescent yellow kits. Uh, alongside her is the rider who I think has been the revelation of the 2020 season, uh, that being Mavi Garcia. And another rider to really look out for is Australian Chloe Hosking for Rally Cycling. Now, she has an impressive Palmaris with wins in Chongming Island, Tour Guangxi and Tour Down Under. And if the race finishes in a small group, she definitely has the acceleration to win this race, in my opinion. Yeah, we've also got Cecily Utrup Ludwig. Uh, actually, we can rattle so many names off that could potentially win, but she has finished on the podium here. Corin Rivera, another former winner. In fact, the only rider from the USA on the men's or the women's side to have ever won the Tour of Flanders. You can't count out Demi Vollering. She looked good against Welvergem too. Neither can you count out the entire Equipe Paula Carr. Uh, now, unfortunately, just a couple of weeks ago, that team was dealt their second blow of the season. Paula Carr, the French fashion brand, had stepped in to replace two sponsors who'd pulled out mid-season, but they've now pulled out themselves. A huge blow for that team, and therefore you would imagine there are at least a few riders from it uh, on the start line on Flanders who will still be fighting to get a contract. Connor and I very much both know what it's like to be without contract at this point in the season, and so we very much wish them all the very best. Right then, uh, time for our GCN predictions. Uh, I'll let you go first, Connor, so you've got first choice. Oh, okay. I'm only really joking me. because just before we went on air, I told him who I've got, so uh, he's got, <laughs> got to make his second choice. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to go for Wout van Aert in the men's race, I think. Oh, he's going to want, as a Belgian, you're going to want to win Flanders. And I think in the women's race, I'm, I'd love to see Lizzie, Lizzie Diagnum take it. It's just so impressive to see her racing in after giving birth to her first, her first child. So. Yeah, she has been incredibly impressive this yeah. year, it's got to be said, and inspirational as well. Uh, right there, well, the person I got in with first uh, before Connor was Mathieu van der Poel, riding for Alpes in Phoenix. They've also got a decent team here, and I don't know, I, I just really love watching him race. Not that I don't watch, love watching other people race, but I'd love to see him win the Tour of Flanders. I think it's just that he's so exciting. Uh, and on the women's side, I'm gonna go for Lizzie Banks. I didn't even mention her, Dan. Well, we have now, haven't we? Although I did in passing, really, through the whole of the Akeep Paula car, but she's also been impressive this year, uh, and I'd love to see her take the win too. Right, let's head over to some of our international presenters and some of the others from the UK to find out their thoughts on the winners. Wout van Aert, Alberto Betiol and Mats Pedersen. Mathieu van der Poel. Wout van Aert, 
I'm going for Lizzie Dignan and Matthew Vanderpool. They were my picks. Copycat. Well, I'm going for Lizzie Dignan as well, Yorkshire. And I'm also going to go in the men's. I'm going Van Aar. Ah. I'm going for Lizzie Dignan for the women. And I'm going for, wow, Van Aar for the men. Interesting. Uh, although I haven't actually seen them, I've learned from my mistake of the Giro d'Italia preview in which we came back from the predictions, which I hadn't seen, and I said we had all bases covered uh, when most of them went for Jakob Fulsang. Like you did, actually. And he's not looking bad at the Giro at this point in time, is there he? There you go, Dan. Uh, my pick, Simon Yates, out of the race, of course. Uh, right, well, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to let us know who you think is going to win the Tour of Flanders. Uh, you'll be watching, presumably, Connor? Oh, for sure. I'm not sure what beer I'll be drinking while I'm watching yet. I'm still, still thinking of that one. But... Duval? Yeah, or maybe a Leffe. We'll see. Well, I learnt that Leffe is apparently quite a sort of, you know, a beer that people look down upon if they're into it over in Belgium. It's oh, quite really? common. Oh, OK, yeah. That was always something I look forward to. I learnt that last year at the start of the Tour de France. <laughs> In your snobby beer bar. <laughs> through, through Dries, our friend over at, uh, over at Flanders there. So um, I'll probably have a West Marler uh, on the first cobbled section, and I don't know what I'll be on by the 11th. <laughs> I don't even know how many cobbled sectors there are, actually, and I definitely won't by that point. <laughs> uh, right, thanks very much for watching. We hope you enjoy the coverage. Don't forget, we've also got the breakaway to break down not just the men's and the women's Tour of Flanders, but also stage 15 of the Giro d'Italia. Uh, that'll be up on Sunday evening, and actually, uh, after the Giro d'Italia stages, after every single stage, uh, before we get to that point. So I'll see you then. <laughs>